For neutrality in war is a concentrated, contained mind, which is the ruling force. Inmates watched as Darla bent over, with her little shorts on to tease them all. She laughed and would invite Bill behind the old barn to have his way with her. That's when the two guards were at their worst with the inmates, once nearly shooting off Bill's nose in a testing of wills. That's when Charles came running with his pants halfway down at the rifle shots, and Bill, along with Rex and Tom, were just looking up, afraid to say a thing, and to laugh at the lipstick kisses on Charles' underwear was quite beside them in the moment. The warden had plans for Charles. He knew Charles was as cold and calculating as he, and wished to bring him into the know of intelligence to cross the barrier between frontman and go into the project's heart. They worked as a team. This was why the warden wanted his daughter Darla to marry him, as a sort of coercive measure to keep Charles wanting the same thing, and thus to be the warden's right-hand man, and to be there to protect him, to watch his back, and to bring and keep a close eye on the prize horse. Stellar, for they knew Stellar was hiding many things about himself, that is, Bill, that there were many powers in Bill that even Bill could not know or understand. The time just mentioned was one of those times the boys were playing with rocks, which the first one hit square on Bill's shovel head, making a pinning sound enough to turn the heads of the other inmates, Rex and Tom. Rex and Tom were put here for two different reasons. Rex was a secret plant to keep an eye on Stellar. The head of the divisions had picked up on the tracing of that similar frequency, which throughout decades, the Black Pope was sanctioned to watch over. The technology which kept hidden was never lost. The ability to use higher technology, such as computers, was never lost, nor ever rediscovered, only to show the massive control the divisions truly had over the sphere over the ages. Thank God I penned this from a place of future prosperity and hope, now in deep space, recollecting this for Leviathan's archives. She will be the only one to save any account of this history. I both had to live to understand. Tom was a robot of sorts, pitted against Stellar at birth. That is, the group known as the Black Crows, who worked directly under the Black Pope's rule, would speak to Tom Dooner through a frequency. They fashioned him to be easily controllable to be docile and compliant, yet with a fragile ego which could work as a bridle. When they told Tom to kill his own family, it was only a test of compliance, and he did exactly what he was controlled to do. The suggestions had to be emitted on a very low frequency wave, just under 33 hertz. Anything above this would reach past the EM grid, which would go out into deep space, which was what the asteroid belt was in place to do, among other things. Remember, this reality, along with all others, was a long, drawn-out chess game that was tied and tethered to different times, spaces, regions, and zones. There were few who could even follow the trail, much less why the trail or pattern broke, than to come together in a seeming new era. Tom was there to be a friend to Bill, and yet to make a grand attempt at killing Stellar, by trapping him within a sphere in an experiment which they would both end up being in. The next rock hit Tom in the back of the head, just as Bill went back to digging, along with the rest, just to forget it. The boys laughed, feeling a false sense of power, as they had done before but truly being pawns or force bots themselves in the moment. Bill had a want to protect, to vest much into it. He kept the idea of Jesus within his heart. As Bill turned with jaw clenched 
and fist and shovel slightly raise. The boys, Andy, the meanest of the two, Charles' sister's son. Though no one was supposed to know, they all knew, including Stellar, and now Bill, as Stellar let him know in a dream session where Stellar would be permitted to unite with Bill's soul and had even begun to do dream work on Bill's morphed DNA in order to give Bill and Stellar a chance. This too done with extremely low, near to negative levels of EM pulse frequencies. Side of him, of their shared spherical body. Andy was indignant, overconfident and spoiled. He grabbed his shotgun and cocked it. Discharging the shell, he pointed it right at Bill's head. Part of Stellar felt relief, as did a larger part of Bill. The smile only pressed Andy to more anger in order to show a dominance. Biff, the other deputy guard, placed his hand on Andy's shoulder, but Andy shrugged it away. Andy was sweating, drenched in their own sweat from the heat. In the distance, no one seemed to care about the moans coming from Darla in the barn and the yelling and grunting. Two by fours falling over as he would lay her on the old sawmill, which had no blade nor machinery now. Only the skeleton of its worn out bygone use. The floor would creak and one would think there was an ignorance as to how loud they would be. Yet the barn was 130 yards away, enough to have blocked the noise if there weren't pure silence with no large obstruction as to not combat the flow of sound waves. The rifle now in Stellar's face, for it was Stellar who was now present, as the glow of Bill's eyes first going into a petite mall micro seizure of sorts with a flutter of the eyes, and Bill was gone in the background now. The rifle barrel could have easily been moved by Stellar, though he was now breaking such universal law as to alert everything of his presence. Just what they had all waited for. Andy was held levitating above Stellar. Stellar moved nothing but created instantly a perfect 12-foot sphere around them, for even the land seems to be instantly cut away from its root, yet having never really moved at all. There was not gravity change, no hair stood on end. Andy was in stellar sphere within his realm. He could easily make him disappear with the swirl of fermion within him and a reset to the all. Absorb his power or recombine him into anything he so thought or chose. Let him down, you freak. I know why they have you freaked here. Oh, do you, Stellar was succumbing to the darkness that was within Bill and the darkness Stellar had known. And he was some of the most feared and dangerous men ever to have lived, a god. Stellar felt his power. He caused Andy to pull the trigger, but time itself was bent. Andy was now Bill, and Stellar was the god who hung above them, the shadow around the sky within the sphere. Andy was in a world of Stellar's making now, not truly understanding size of the dimension, but that Stellar was indeed the god. The black figure pulsed, and storm clouds were within the sphere of seeming infinite potentials. A strange and twisted pulse of time and relative size was now tuned to Stellar's very heartbeat and adrenal release. The sky around them all turned and it began to rain, lightning, and Stellar's consciousness grew. He was wrapped around the earth and going into the solar system, and while he drew the power, with all happening in a nanosecond as time seemed to freeze outside, in the shed, frozen in their pleasure filled near orgasmic freeze frame faces, Charles and Darla felt their eternal humanity and what they were in total truth. As with them all, as with everyone, everywhere, truth, anger, wrath, and the wrath of stellar mass was known and felt. Bill's voice called out to Stellar, Stellar, stop. We are the same, brother. We are stuck in this together. 
Stellar became Bill again and moved the rifle to the right side as it discharged. And the moment was just as it was prior to. In fact, no time went by at all. And there was no account for not a micro moment moved. Yet the sadness, the truth lay in all hearts and minds, penetrating into all eras of five time swirl. The storm came upon them, and though Charles and Darla stunned, he heard the ejection of the shot. And with all this truth within him, ran, leaving Darla in her shame of who she was and what she was created for, the helplessness. They all stood before the father, and they knew it, only abstracted by this false spin of reality, which would rebuffer itself. The magnitude felt in the Black Crow Committee sunk deep in the ground 13 floors under the Vatican. The pulse was just what they had been waiting for. In the office of the Black Crow's Council, Stellar dropped to his knees in that ditch. Charlie was left there, heaving, wiping away the lipstick from his left cheek, too many times to be rational. Andy mentioned at his zipper, enough to divert his attention away from the awestruck truth, though far too premature. Stellar was surprised himself, and he feared this, for in his recognition of outer works, he may identify him.